Kirchen. Hey, welcome. In these set of three videos, we are going to talk about statistical process control. So when you Google for statistical process control charts, you will see that there are n number of charts that you can use. But the good thing for us is that most of these charts have a very common basis. So in this particular first video, we are going to try and explain that common basis to all these control charts, right? So the first thing that um, I want to talk about is why do we do these process control charts? And the purpose of these process control charts is to tell us if the process is performing as it should. So this, this point should be noted here that you're not trying to test if the process is good enough for a particular customer. That's a different story. All we are trying to test here is if the process is performing as it should. Now, this is a very fuzzy statement. And uh, all of us in operations and supply chain management generally don't like fuzzy statements. So we try to make a more accurate statement or a more definite statement by saying that are the variations associated with the process normal? Okay, or is, is, is something extraordinary happening here? Or is something which is unexpected happening here? Again, this is a better definition, but still this is not a definite or a perfect definition. So what do we do is we, this is the definition created that are the variations within plus minus three sigma. Now this is a more definite definition of variations. But, and here sigma stands for standard deviations. So now the question is, why did we select plus minus three sigma? Well, if we look at normal distributions, 99.73% of the times the data lies between plus minus three standard deviations or plus minus three sigma. So a chance that a data point will lie outside plus minus three sigma limits is just 0.27 which we consider to be rare and abnormal. So in normal chances, which is 99.73, most values will lie between plus minus three sigma. And that is why we consider this to be normal. And anything outside this, we assume it to be abnormal or random or special. Okay, so having done this, now comes the next part is how do we make these charts? Now. So first thing is we need to define what are we trying to control, right? So for example, um, there are two big items here, variables and attributes. Variables is anything that can be measured. So you need a scale or some kind of reference to measure this, it's called variable. So length, width, thickness, life of an object, um, life of something that you're using um, are all variables. Even things like customer satisfaction, anything that we measure on a scale, one to seven, how happy you were, on a scale of one to 10, how satisfied you are, or, or all those things which can be measured are considered to be variables. And um, so next video, video two, we are going to study control charts for variables. And attributes is anything that can be counted. We don't need a measurement scale or anything. We just count one, two, three, four, um, that, that's control chart, those are called as attributes. So number of defective products in a batch or, or number of dissatisfied customers, right? So if, if you have a flight and the flight has 400 customers, fl uh, flyers, how many of those 400 were dissatisfied? Or um, number of mistakes made in a theater performance or so something like that. So whenever we count or have a number that those are reflected by control charts for attributes. All right, so now steps. How do we create control charts? So simple, we um, take multiple batches, right? We do, we do control charts are formed for batches. They're not formed for individual values. So we take multiple batches and each batch has N samples. So, um, and, and for each of them we measure, right? So, so let's suppose we are measuring the um, thickness of a particular object. So we take, batches of 15 objects and we take 100 batches and each batch has 15 objects and we measure thickness of each. So thickness of first object in first batch, thickness of second object in first batch, thickness of 15th object in the first batch, 
thickness of the first object in the second batch and so on. So we, we, we take all these values, right? And then if you're measuring thickness, is, is we find the mean for each batch. So mean thickness for each batch. And then you'll find the grand mean for all the batches. That grand mean becomes our center line. Okay. So we found the center line. Then we use some charts, which I'm going to talk about in the in the next videos, to talk uh, to use those charts to form these upper limits and lower control limits. And and, and these upper and control limits are um, you they, they use the variations or standard deviation concept. But again, that's not important for us at this point. But we use control and can create these control limits. So long as the observations are within control limits, we say that the process is in control. Or all we are saying is that the variation is being caused by normal cause. That's nothing abnormal with that. Or there's nothing special. But the moment a point value lies outside the control limits, what we claim is that, oops, there's a control, there's a special cause which needs our attention. And then we need to look into the process, find the special cause and correct it. Well, that, that's about it for this generic idea of control charts. In video two, we'll talk about control charts for variables. And in video three, we'll talk about control charts for attributes. See you on the other side.